And this is a super cool trick because all you need to do is to create a shortcut file, send it over to the user, they clicked on it, open it up, and boom, you have full remote control of the entire PC. And the reason why this is possible is because from the shortcut file, you're able to point it over to a specific command. In this case, what we are going to point to over here is going to be the shortcut over into say CMD or even possibly PowerShell. They give us power to remotely control and run command execution in the PC. And in this case, we can download a file and then run that file that we have created. This is a super easy tutorial to do. Now, before we get started, kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them that you learned it from Mr. Hacker Lawyer. And do not send this file over to your friends or co-workers because that would mean unauthorized access into their computers. Well, which basically means it is illegal. Now the question is, who can you send it to? Well, send it over to Mr. Hacker Lawyer, and I'll be able to help you find out your IP address, your username, your password, and all of that, and it's free of charge for you. <laughs> so the first thing you need is a Windows computer. I mean, without a Windows computer, what are you going to create a shortcut file? And who are you going to hack? <laughs> And of course, as part of the Windows computer feature, you can easily do a right click and click under new and select under shortcut file. And once you're in here, it asks you, what item would you like to create a shortcut for? So this is the key question. So we enter the location of the item. So in this case, there are specific default locations for very powerful tools that we can use or powerful executables that we can run. So in this case, if you click under browse, you're able to select under say this PC. And if you go on a C drive, and it can go into something like program files, x86, for example. You can open up Firefox under the firefox.exe. So this is a way for us to open up and run an executable. So right now, what are we exactly looking for? So there are default installation path, say for example, like command prompt, PowerShell, that we can target to point into. So once we point over to these executables, we can then send instructions along with it that would then allow us to remotely control the computer. So in this case, if I go ahead and expand onto local disk C, I go over into Windows and I scroll all the way down into System32 so I can enter System32. And then I expand on this folder, all right? I scroll all the way down and I can enter say cmd.exe. This is the file that we're targeting. I click OK, I click Next, and then we can give it a name. So you can call this a Hacker Loy Shortcut. Finish, done. So you can see right here, we have the shortcut file. I can do a right click on this, select on the properties, and you can see over here, we're following, all right? So this is the target. So we can target Windows System32 CMD.exe. So here's the more beautiful part is that we can have instructions within the shortcut file. So what I mean by that, it means that while we are launching the CMD.exe, we can send instructions along with it without having it to just open the command prompt. So if I double clicked on this, it opened up the command prompt. All right, so instead of opening it up, can we just go ahead and send instruction to it? And the answer is a beautiful yes. And right in front of us, we have command prompt. So this is a way for us to send instructions over into the computer. And say, for example, I enter DIR to list all the different files, folders within the working directory. Or if I enter, say, for example, CD over the desktop, and so on and so forth. So all of these different types of commands like DIR, CD, desktop, and so on. Now, what we are trying to do here is to insert this directly into the shortcut file. And now before we go any further, we're moving back to Kernel Linux, and this is our ethical hacking operating system they'll be using. So you can see the instruction right here. And this instruction states the following. We're creating a file using MSF Venom. And then we, of course, we have this reverse PowerShell. We have the host, the port number, and an output file of hackerloy.bat. So we're creating this file so that we can host it on our system. And then the user wants to click on a shortcut, it would download this file and execute on that file, giving us remote control ability into the target PC. And once you're ready, in three, two, one, hit enter. And now we're creating that BAT file. And once that file is created, we'll send it over or move it over into our www directory so we can host it. So all you have to do right now is enter move hackerloy.bat into var www.html slash hackerloy.bat. Hit enter on that. It states cannot move, All right, permission denied. No worries, enter super user do, enter your password right now, hit enter on that and boom, done. All right, so now we have to file. And next thing we need to do is ensure that we can start up our Apache server. All right, so in this case, sudo system 
start apache2.service, hit enter on that. All right, so now we've started our Apache server. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter a status to ensure that it has already been started. So you can see right here, active and running. So right here, I have already created the target instruction for you to insert into shortcut. So you can see right here, we are calling the command.exe slash C, and we're using this service or tool called CertUtil, and we're targeting the IP address of Kali Linux, as well as the file of hackerloid.bat and save it over into right, the current PC under desktop hackerloid.bat. So what I'll do now is if you see on the left side over here, I have hackerloid.bat. So what I'll do now is go ahead and delete that file. So we have this inserted into the target of a shortcut. So you can see right here, everything is as it is. Click apply, click OK. And what we got to do now, so if you watch closely, you watch carefully, I double clicked on it and boom, you can see on the left side right here, hackerloid.bat now appears because it went over to the site and downloaded the file and place it into the desktop directory. And though we have downloaded the file, but we have not yet executed on it. So we need to execute it. So once we execute it, it means to allow us to have remote control of the PC. And now you see over here, we have an additional instruction NN execute on that file. So it means that once we have downloaded the file into the directory, we will now be able to execute the file which then gives us the power to have remote control of the PC. Now, jumping back to Kali Linux, all we got to do right now is enter NC and LVP, and in this case, port 4444. So we're starting up our listener. Listener, meaning that once the user executes on that file, it gives us remote control of it. So now jumping back over into the Windows computer, all I got to do right now is double click onto this shortcut file, all right? So let me go to the left, delete the existing hackerloid.bat, so we have an end-to-end -end instruction within a shortcut file. Double-clicked on it. Boom. Go back over to Kali Linux. You can see right here, we are able to enter, say, DIR. That's it. It's game over. We are in. We have full remote control of the entire computer. I can say CD over into the user. Or I say CD over into users. CD over into Loy, Liang Yang. CD over into desktop. And I can see right here in the DIR, we can see all this different files, folders within the desktop of Loy Liang Yang. So we managed to hack into Mr. Hacker Loy. Now what I will do is go ahead and enter say echo, you have been hacked over into say hack.txt, done. All right, so what I will do next is go ahead and enter notepad followed by hack.txt. Hit enter on that and boom, if I go back over to Windows computer, you can see right here, you have been hacked. So we have full remote control of the entire PC.